Does it seem as if everyone is going cuckoo for coconut? These days, the tropical orbs are a featured ingredient in everything from snacks to yogurts to packaged soups and shampoos. So why is everything coming up coconut? Here with the story is WSJ life and arts writer Anne-Marie Chaker. Anne-Marie, thanks so much for being with us. So I am seeing coconut hey, everywhere these days. What are the origins of coconut mania? So we started seeing it as coconut water, right? Coconut water became this like all natural sports drinks. A sports drink, it was supposed to be high in electrolytes. Um, and then it hit the dairy case um, when we started seeing soy milk, then almond milk, and it kind of became what's the next almond milk? And we started seeing coconut milk as the darling of the dairy case. And then it just kind of went from there, and it's a base in soups. Um, it's a snack food. We're seeing it as a touted ingredient in beauty products. Um, and it's sort of this catch-all, like, good-for-you ingredient. It fits into every... Um, current uh, health fad right now from the gluten-free people to the dairy-free. Everybody's trying to eat plant-based everything, so it's well, it's everywhere. Well, let's get to the bottom of this nutritionally. Uh, we talk about it being really good for you. I guess it is gluten-free, but I also thought it was high in fat. So, so what is the deal with coconut? Is it good for you or not? So it's one of these things that when people hear it's good for you, they interpret that to mean all you can eat, and that's not necessarily a good thing. So let's start with coconut oil. Coconut oil is high in saturated fat, but it's plant-derived, so that's a good thing. And it can help nudge up levels of good cholesterol, so that's a good thing. The other big one is coconut sugar that everyone is turning to as an alternative to regular table sugar. Coconut sugar is considered uh, more moderate on the glycemic index than our other types of sugar, which means it can make blood sugar spike less, which can help stave off hunger. Um, but you know, you gotta remember, sugar is still sugar and fats are still fats, so these things have to be consumed in moderation. Absolutely, so can you give us a few snapshots of some of the coconut featured products that you're seeing? Yeah, well, the big one, and you as a mom have probably seen this too on the playground and in lunch boxes, is these coconut chips. Um, they're made by companies like Dang. Um, the other big one is uh, Bear Foods, and they're kind of these potato chip alternatives. Um, Dang, I think, promotes them as being just as high in fiber and with less sugar than a medium sized apple. Um, but you got to read the nutrition label on these because they're, you know, 150, 160 calories a serving and 10 grams of fat, which definitely puts it in potato chip category. Yeah. Um, so it's really easy to snarf an entire bag of these. <laughs> not that I've done that. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> so, Anne-Marie, what has this done to coconut supply and demand and its pricing as a commodity? Who is benefiting from this surge in sales? Yeah, so the three main countries responsible for m much of the coconut exports are Indonesia, India, and the Philippines. Um, and Haim Celestial is a company that I talked to that makes lots and lots of these natural type foods um, that feature coconut in a lot of them. And they were saying that just in the last year alone, uh, coconut, their coconut oil prices have increased between 5 and 7 percent. So you know, at some point, that's going to start to hit uh, consumers at the grocery store. Absolutely. Now, it was, certainly will be interesting to see how this plays out. We've we've seen the superfood mania happen before. I think acai was the latest one I remember. So <laughs> these things do tend to come in waves, don't they? They do. They do. I mean, think about it. Uh, pasta. There's so many of them. Kale, broccoli, rob. Um, it depends on all kinds of things from, you know, it could be plentiful supply to a health study that comes out that touts some health benefit to this ingredients that consumers may have thought was bad for you before. So we shall see how things play out for coconut. It lasts, these trends typically last between five and seven years or more. All right, great. Well, we hope to see you before that to talk about the next big super <laughs> ingredient. Thank you so much, Anne-Marie, for that. Thank you, Tanya.